Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode with me Danny and the very important topic of Google Tag Manager. Today's episode is an advanced one and we will talk about transaction tracking in Google Analytics and also in Google Tag Manager. How do the two relate together in relation to your CMS? So there are three things that we need to do. That's an overview of what you need to do is first we need to create the tag in Google Tag Manager for the transaction tracking and also we need to tr uh, create the trigger which will fire that particular tag and finally we need to create a data layer which will bundle all our data from the transaction or from the sale that we are doing and push it into uh, Google Analytics through Google Tag Manager. This is an overall of an overall uh, view of what will happen and what will take place. So let's get started. Uh, first, I'm heading into Google Tag Manager and into Tags. And I will create a new tag, which I start by giving a name here. And the name is Google Analytic Universal Tag dash report e-commerce. Obviously, you can name anything you want, but I like to keep things consistent with our previous videos. The next is I'll have to select what type of tag. Obviously, it's a universal analytics. I'll choose this. My tracking ID is a variable that I have created in the past, and it's GA tracking ID, so I'll reference it. Here's where it gets different. The track type this time is transaction. That's very important. And Google Tag Manager tells us that use e-commerce tracking to find out what visitors buy through your website. This is exactly what we're trying to do. One of the things you need to do in your Google Analytics is to enable uh, e-commerce tracking. And I will show you how to do this when we move to Google Analytics. Moving uh, next. I will have to uh, decide on the trigger. So I uh, go down here to triggering and I will create a new trigger by clicking on the plus sign at the top right corner here. This is what will decide when will the transaction trigger get fired or when will the transaction tag get fired. I will give it a name and the name is transaction complete trigger. I'll get into the configuration. This is of type custom event. So I will select custom event. And the event name is the particular event label or name that you will um, have implemented inside of the data layer and we will talk about that but for now remember that the name would be uh, transaction complete you could name it anything you want but make sure it's consistent with the label or the event name inside of your data layer later on and I'm going to trigger this on all custom events. So I'm saving this. Now I have already created my trigger and also the tag. So I'm ready to save this. This is pretty much it for Google Tag Manager. I can go and uh, publish this particular instance or this particular change. And before I do that, I'm going to head into uh, my CMS to show you how does a data layer looks like. So my CMS is WordPress. You could be using something else, Joomla, Drupal, anything else. But for the sake of uh, the exercise today, we are going to stick to WordPress. And here's something I need you to understand. There are a variety of plugins that you can use with WordPress in order to implement e-commerce transactions. One of the most important ones is WooCommerce. And one of the best, and it's been going on for many years with a very good star rating. 
Another uh, plugin which I have worked in the past is called Shop with double P at the end. That's another great plugin. And no matter what plugin you're using, you need to make certain modifications in order to create something called the data layer, which will bundle all your transaction data in a particular fashion and then push it onto Google Analytics. This is how it works in general. So let me uh, show you how the code looks like going to minimize this and go into my code here. The first code that I'm showing here is actually a code from WooCommerce. WooCommerce, the way it works with this particular plugin and with most of the plugins in uh, WordPress is if you want to add any functionality to an existing uh, feature of your plugin, you're better off using uh, what we call hooks. And WooCommerce is great at that because it gives you a whole class of hooks that you can attach to. Uh, it could be action hooks or filter hooks. And we can talk about that in a whole different episode. It's a big topic. But for those who already know about this, the way we're implementing our data layer today in uh, WooCommerce is using the WooCommerce underscore thank you action hook, which allows me to uh, create a function, which I have called here Google Analytics e-commerce transaction tracking. And I've passed in my order ID. And then here is a bit of PHP code, which will give me a pointer to my order and also give me information about the user who is making that order and some data about the items which are bundled in my sale. Then moving on, this is the actual code which we call the data layer. It's a, a, a JavaScript snippet which you can find on Google websites and uh, it looks something like this, data layer dot push, and you have uh, almost like a JSON note, uh, note a notification here. Now, next, this part is a JavaScript uh, snippet of code, which you can find on the Google website and it basically starts as data layer dot push and you have all the attributes of your particular transaction. As you can see, the transaction has an ID, an affiliation, a total, a shipping cost, a tax, and also a list of products. And I'll get I'll get into this, but before that, let me show you how it's implemented in WooCommerce. Basically, you uh, get back into PHP mode and you echo the order transaction ID. And then you do the same for the get total in order to get the total of your transaction or of your order. Calculate shipping. All these particular functions are built in functions of WooCommerce. So I have uh, done my research and I found out that these are the particular functions that you need to call in order to evaluate a particular property with its value as per the JavaScript data layer here. Now, if I move below this, you would see there is a for each uh, loop here, which is going through all my items. Again, this is PHP and then I'm, I'm uh, getting the product ID and also the product price, the SKU number, saving all this in variables. And then later on, when I get back into JavaScript mode, I continue writing my uh, variables here as in the item name, SKU, category, price, and quantity. This is what uh, this is what uh, Google Analytic e-commerce uh, expects you to provide as information bundled in a data layer. And you're supposed to have it ready and push it into Google Analytics whenever the variables are, are populated here. So this is the script. 
uh, for WooCommerce. Let me show you how Shop does it. Shop is slightly different, uh, or at least the implementation that I have uh, currently in Shop is not based on hooks, but it's actually based on modifying some of the code in the thank you page of Shop, or also sometimes known as the uh, receipt page. I think it's called receipt.php. And you can add this uh, particular code and saying uh, in PHP, if is a thanks page, then we are going to uh, call our JavaScript data layer right here, pushing the respective values from shop. And notice how here uh, the value for the transaction ID is being evaluated using that particular uh, shop function, which is called shop, and you pass in the purchase, and then you pass in the transaction ID, the particular variable you're trying to get the value of. Similarly, when we get to the transaction total, shop has another uh, function, which is called uh, purchase again, and you pass in the uh, variable total and so on and so forth. You can see you can actually get the taxes paid on a particular uh, order. And same thing uh, in regards to the products, uh, the JavaScript notation by Google Analytics for the data layer actually expects a list of products, each or a list of items, and each item is basically having a name, a SKU number, category, price, and quality, and quantity. And obviously, the only difference between Shop and WooCommerce is the way you implement these uh, particular uh, values for the particular attributes. And that's it. So uh, again, if we go back to our uh, WooCommerce, for example, and we go to WordPress, I would go into Appearance, Editor, and I would go into my particular functions.php file right here. If I scroll all the way down, I could add my code right here. So I can go and grab my code for the uh, WooCommerce hook, the action hook with the function that I was just created up to here. I can copy that code and just paste it underneath right here and hit the update button. Once I do this, my particular WooCommerce instance is ready to uh, bundle the data into the data layer and push it whenever the event gets fired. But what event? Hang on, let me go back to the code. I wanna show you something interesting here. Notice how, this is my code again, okay? And notice how the last statement after actually passing in all the products, I do have another attribute here, which is event transaction complete. Basically, this is how data layers work in Google Analytics. They basically expect an event with a name, and whenever you push that data for that particular event name, the uh, particular uh, trigger will get fired and leading to the tag being implemented in your page. And therefore, pushing the data layer uh, attributes into Google Analytics. So as you can see here, back in my WordPress and in my functions.php, you can see that after I have um, pretty much added all the product or the items, I do have the event name here attached at the end of the data layer. So I can update it. There you go. And now we are pretty much ready to accept all of our sales and be able to push all the data. There is one more piece you need to do, and that is to go into your Google Analytics, in case you haven't done that part, into admin, and under the view of your particular website, you have a section that says e-commerce settings. I would click on it, and I would make sure to enable the uh, e-commerce uh, tracking right here in case it's uh, turned off or if its status is uh, off, make sure you turn it on so you can click on edit and toggle, but make sure it's on basically. And then you can say next step and submit. 
Obviously, there's a setting here which says enhanced e-commerce settings, and that is a whole new beast, which we will need probably more than one episode to explore. But for now, we are uh, particularly interested in the regular e-commerce tracking, which for the most part, in my opinion, is pretty decent and good enough. And with that, I would hit the submit and my all of my uh, systems are now ready to accept transactions and push the data into Google Analytics using Google Tag Manager. Now, for all of you who are interested in the code for the uh, WooCommerce uh, hook, or even the uh, shop hook, you might want to do one thing. Go ahead right now and subscribe for a free account with WebOck because I will be giving away this code for a number of people who are going to subscribe on the site and be part of our community. I'm gladly sharing it uh, with those uh, special people. And until a new episode of uh, WebOck and a new uh, web-related video, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care.